Hello, hello. What's up? Oh man, sprinklers are on. <laughs> All right, welcome, welcome. Hang on, all right, I'll be right back. Hold on a second. All right. All right, good evening, good evening. What's up, everybody? How you doing? Welcome. Thanks for uh, joining. Hey, let me know where you're tuning in from. Um, if you see me actually looking up, looking down, I'm on Instagram also. So uh, trying out Instagram live at the same time. Everybody, welcome from uh, Facebook and also Instagram if you're tuning in. Thanks for uh, checking us out. The Well church welcome welcome let me know uh where you're tuning in from let me know who's here if you can uh, please let me know hi laura <laughs> that's good welcome laura how you doing thanks for uh jumping on here i appreciate it how was your day how's everybody's day doing it's a beautiful day hot day Oh man, praise God. You know, this week has been an interesting week, uh, nonetheless. A good week, but uh, interesting. You know, there's there's some new things that uh, I've been praying and asking God about, and uh, man, is he delivering. I mean, when doesn't he deliver, right? He always answers our prayers. Maybe not the way that we want, uh, specifically, but uh, he answers, let me tell you, nonetheless. And uh, it's really exciting. So just a little bit about what he's doing. Um, I asked about, I asked him if, uh, not if, I asked him that I want to go deeper uh, this year. I want to uh, get to know him even at a deeper level. And what I mean by that is um, more of his Holy Spirit, uh, more of the fruits of the Spirit. You know, there's uh, the Bible talks about different uh, different uh, gifts and talents, different gifts and, and talents that the Holy Spirit gives. And so I'm glad you're cool. I'm glad. Um, but it, yeah, that's what I've been. You know, this year has been quite challenging and uh, not just obviously because of COVID-19 and you know, uh, the race relations and the social injustice, uh, you know, the, the pedophiles, the, uh, you know, sex trafficking, like all that and some, right? Um, but I'll be honest, you know, I, I started feeling physically, all right, uh, different since December. And generally in December, again, and here we are, we're in almost the end of July, but in uh, December, I literally was praying and fasting, praying and fasting, you know, asking God to, to really reveal himself to me, uh, to transform me, to change me. I wanted to go, I, I asked him, I said, I want to go deeper. I want to have a deeper understanding and relationship, you know, um, with your Holy Spirit. And uh, man, let me tell you, oh, uh, I don't want to say be careful what you pray for, what you ask for, right? It, it's not that. It's just, it's been really a full dependence. You know, um, it's been a full dependence on him. You know, these, uh, really these, this last year and a half since we've been uh, planting this church, you know, the well here in uh, East Palmdale. And uh, you want to be, you want to talk about full dependence, you know, emotionally you know physically uh spiritually you know and financially and relationally i mean all aspects of our lives right um this is it you know and it's been it's been such a sweet time 
And what I mean by sweet, it's been such an experience where, you know, I've had the opportunity to go deeper, you know, deeper with God, uh, deeper with, um, you know, um, the Holy Spirit. You know, we believe that, you know, uh, you know, our God is, you know, Heavenly Father. He is, uh, you know, the Son, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, you know, uh, the Trinity. And, you know, many of us neglect, if we're honest, you know, we neglect the Holy Spirit. You know, we pray, obviously, hey, Heavenly Father, you know, we mention Him. Uh, we obviously mention Jesus, right? Jesus Christ. And, but where's the Holy Spirit? And so that's what I've been doing is really acknowledging the third part of our God, um, you know, his divine spirit, the Holy Spirit, and really going deeper, you know, uh, understanding, you know, what the Holy Spirit is. Uh, he's obviously comforter and he's our counselor, you know, like the scripture says. And uh, excuse the doggy, I'm outside, but... Uh, beautiful nature enjoying uh, the sunset and you know, to my left and as you can see my face when I go like this lean forward I'm in my backyard uh, just enjoying the beautiful uh, coolness now it's cooling down a bit but uh, anyway I just want to share that with you and it's been it's been incredible uh, it's it's been a contrast of looking at my own walk with God my own um, relationship with him my own relationship with him, my personal relationship with him, and and really looking at looking at things that I thought were having a relationship with him and what it meant to be a follower of Jesus compared to what he what he tells me is having a relationship with him. And you know, as 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 God continues to reveal himself through his spirit, through his Holy Spirit, you know, I'll be talking about it more here and here. I I just want to let you know like what's going on man it's it's such a an amazing experience um challenging of course because you know he's getting me outside of outside of my comfort zone as, as you know you know we all love our comfort and we all like to stay in our you know we we make our own religion right we create our own bubble of this is what it means you know each of us have have our own understanding of what we think what we believe you know following jesus is and nonetheless you know it's it's something totally sometimes you know we're off we're off on a whole different field you know somewhere else and then the holy spirit you know brings us into relationship with him um and really begins to reveal things that and here's here's the truth that we idolize uh, that we that we protect that we say, hey, don't mess with this, whatever that is, don't mess with it. And and God actually begins to unravel that. God begins to, you know, tell you, no, that's not, that has nothing to do with me. You know, that has nothing to do with you having a relationship with me, um, has nothing to do with you, you know, uh, drawing closer to me. That actually is a division that actually puts a hedge between you and me. And so, Again, I just wanted to share that with you. I hope, you know, that encourages, you know, one or two or all of you that are tuning in right now to really ask the Holy Spirit, you know, to reveal what's inside of you. And during this time, you know, um, you know, draw closer, you know, draw closer to him and just experience what it is to be fully dependent on the Holy Spirit. All right. Anyways, uh that's what's going on in my life you know uh, I just literally finished uh, working out I by the grace of God I've been uh, you know back on it you know working out about four days uh, yeah, four days a week nothing more than that you know I used to work out religiously you know six seven days a week and uh, I've peeled that back to you know a comfortable four days a week I still push myself hard uh, my wife Jenna you know she's on it she works out you know um, way more than I do you know um, i'm proud of her hey Ju hey susie hey eleanor thanks for joining on appreciate you over here on uh, instagram and also on facebook those of you that are joining on i appreciate you being on here let's pray let's get into it um if you saw my uh what i posted you know um you know we're gonna go deep today and i hope this blesses you you know we're gonna look at 
1 Samuel chapter 1. If you have your Bibles or the Bible app, if you can uh, get ready, turn to that. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1, we're going to get into that. And, um, you know, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for another glorious day. Thank you for a beautiful summer day. Uh, we're so grateful for, um, you know, just this cool breeze up here um, in Palmdale. And we're so grateful that uh, we have technology, that we're able to tune in, God, that we're able to uh, just meet together via technology. And, Lord, we just, uh, we ask you right now, we ask you humbly that you uh, just pause everything. Uh, help us to tune in. Help us to uh, go deep in your word. We open our hearts. We open our minds for your Holy Spirit to uh, reveal what's inside of us. And God, we ask you for the courage to move forward, to take that next step of faith. Uh, wherever you're leading us and guiding us, help us not to be discouraged. Help us not to be afraid, not to be timid. Uh, to be courageous, to step forward with boldness, knowing that your Holy Spirit is inside of us and that uh, you're the one that comforts us and you're the one also that is leading us by the hand. As we continue to dive deep into your word, we continue to ask that your word reveals what's inside of us that needs to be transformed, that needs to be uh, more aligned with uh, with your kingdom. And so we ask that your, that this evening that your kingdom come and that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, God. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can I see some amens or some hearts if you're on Instagram or some likes if you're on Facebook? Some hearts. Let me know you're with me. I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, thank you, guys and gals. I appreciate you. All right, so we're at uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1. Uh, I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to discuss you know, some points with you, uh, some things that stood out. Um, so this is... Uh, Samuel's birth and childhood, uh, you know, just to give you a little uh, synopsis on it, you know, um, Eli is a priest. He's got a couple sons, and uh, these these priests uh, and judges were, were there was priests, there's judges, there's uh, kings, there's prophets. You know, all these people are uh, God has actually you know ordained these people to lead the uh, his people Israel, and we're in this time where it's you know changing from these priests and judges and now coming to a place where kings are going to now uh, rule Israel. Um, Israel is, is uh, they feel like they've been betrayed. They've been taken advantage by these, uh, you know, priests and, um, you know, they're not comfortable with judges anymore and the prophets, you know, so they want a king now. So they're moving from theocracy, right? Theocracy to monarchy. Yeah, they're moving from theocracy to monarchy. And now they want someone to rule over them. Why? Because they're looking around and they're seeing that, you know, there's uh, different nations around them that have a king. And so nonetheless, they, they want a king as well. And so here we are. Hey, uh, Claudia, Brittany, Marsha, thanks for uh, joining on. I appreciate you for hopping on here. We're in, uh, again, 1 Samuel chapter 1. So here's what we're going to read, all right? So uh, there was a certain man of, there was a certain man from Ramath, Ramathaim, a Zephite from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zeph, an Ephraimite. Cool, tongue twisters, right? <laughs> he had two wives, okay? Elkanah had two wives. One was called Hannah and the other one, Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had none year after year this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the lord almighty at shiloh where hophni and uh phinehas the two sons of eli were priests of the lord verse four whenever the day came for elkanah to sacrifice he would give portions of the meat to his wife penina and to all her sons and daughters but to Hannah, catch this, okay, it's going to be important. But to Hannah, he gave double portion because he loved her. All right, so he had his wife, Penina, that had, he had kids with, and he would sacrifice and, you know, bless them. But he had Hannah, which was barren, and uh, he loved her. And so he would give her a double portion of the sacrificial, uh, you know, uh, food and everything that he had that he owned, he'd give it to her. 
And her, so it says her womb was closed in verse five. Verse six, because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival, Penina, her rival, kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she, till she wept and would not eat. Her husband, Elkanah, Elkanah would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than 10 sons? <laughs> and all the ladies laughed. And all the ladies laughed. <laughs> all right, verse 9. Once, once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood. Let me flip my Bible. Hannah stood up. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house in her deep anguish. Okay, this is Hannah. Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly, and she made a vow. She made a promise saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, right? She's begging God, give me a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head, okay? Uh, verse 12, as she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought that she was drunk. Eli thought that she was drunk and said to her, how long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine, right? Put away your wine. And not so, my Lord, Hannah said. Hannah replied, I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. In other words, don't take me for a drunk, right? I've been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, go in peace. I get it. You don't smell like alcohol. Go ahead, go in peace. And may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked for him. She said, may your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something and her face was no longer downcast. Early the next morning, they arose and worshiped before the Lord and they went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah, right, her husband, made love to his wife, Hannah, and then, and the Lord remembered, the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son, that's Samuel. She named him Samuel saying, because I asked the Lord for him. Finally, we close, when her husband Elkanah went up with all his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfill his vow, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, after the boy is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord and he will live there always. Do what seems best to you, her husband Elkanah told her, stay here until you have weaned him, only may the Lord make good his word. So the woman stayed at home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. After he was weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah, a flower, and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. When the bull had been sacrificed, they brought the boy to Eli and said to him, pardon me, my Lord, as surely as you live, I am the woman. Okay, so now she's presenting herself back to Eli at, you know, at the church. And, and at the temple, I am the woman that stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord for his whole life. He will be given over to the Lord and he worshiped the Lord there. All right. A lot of stuff going on here, but I wanted to start off and ask a question. And uh, this is the question that I asked. What? What's up with polygamy? All right? What's up with polygamy? Hey, Ernie. Welcome. Oh, they're at the beach hanging out, man. That's good. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad you guys are hanging out at the beach, man. Anyways, what's up with polygamy, right? And what's interesting about this, um, I wanted to read something to you. And, and it's basically, we see in the Old Testament that a lot of these um, these believers, these followers of God, you know, had multiple wives. You know, we see Abraham, right? Abraham had multiple wives, Jacob, uh, King David, 
you know, they, they were married to multiple wives. And so I want you to know that this wasn't God's original plan or intention. Uh, we read in Genesis chapter two, verse 24, you know, that God made marriage, you know, for two people, right? He intended it. He, the scripture says two become one flesh, that two become one flesh. And so why then did polygamy exist among God's people? Well, I want you to know a couple reasons. First, okay, it was to produce more offspring, to produce more babies, right? For To assure the continuation of the man's family line. Remember, a lot of these men would go to war. A lot of these men, you know, would, would go and fight with different nations and they would lose their lives. Like today, you know, when, when men uh, of our armed, men and women of our armed forces, right? Specifically men, when they go to war and they, they die, you know, um, they want to leave basically a, a uh, you know, they want to leave kids behind so their legacy continues. And so also I want you to know that numerous children, numerous children were a symbol of status and wealth. So if you had a lot of kids that, you know, you're, you were up here in status and also it meant wealth. Second, uh, in societies where many young men were killed in battle, again, we're reiterating that, uh, it became accepted way of supporting women, of supporting women who otherwise would have remained unmarried and very likely destitute. That means that, you know, they, they would be begging, they would be poor, you know, um, all that, all that bad stuff. Okay. And so nevertheless, I want you guys to know that polygamy, uh, as we read here with Hannah and Penina and Elkanah caused a lot of problems. Uh, we read that, <laughs> that Penina would actually flaunt the babies. I mean, I can actually picture her as grabbing her kids and, you know, uh, Hannah would be passing by and she'd be like, nah, 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 nah. I've got kids and you don't have kids, right? Just teasing her. And so we read that, you know, Hannah uh, was basically heartbroken. You know, she she wouldn't even eat of how much anguish and how much, uh, you know, pain she was in because she wasn't able to have kids. And so she was looked down upon, you know, by other women and even also, you know, relatives and other people at that time. And so my question to you is, have you ever been in a position, maybe you are in this position, or maybe you know somebody that is struggling Maybe you're not struggling, or maybe you are struggling. And you begged God. I'm talking about, I mean, let me ask you this. When was the last time that you were so broken up that you were, I mean, tears all over your shirt, you were on the floor, passed out almost. Like we read here, Hannah, Hannah was, you know, and Eli saw her, the priest saw her. When was the last time that you were like that? that you were begging and praying to God and asking him for something. When was that? Think about that. When was the last time that you were in, in, in a place that you were, that if someone saw you, they were like, man, is that person, is she drunk? Oh, is he drunk? Like what's going on where you're just on the floor, passed out, you don't care who's around, you know, uh, you're just crying out to God with everything you got. When was that? I mean, think of that time. Maybe is it now? Maybe it was, again, for the same reasons that Hannah, you know, was distraught. You know, she wanted to have babies. She wanted to have kids. And so I bring that up because, you know, sometimes we get so concerned, we get so caught up with, you know, what people think of us. Um, Maybe we don't want people to see our pain. We don't want them to see our anguish. We don't want them to see, you know, how broken we are because God hasn't answered that specific prayer for us. And I want you to know that, that God wants you, God wants you to cry out to him. Maybe the last time you did it, maybe it was the last time and you're like, you know what? God hasn't answered this prayer. God hasn't answered this desperate prayer that I have. And so maybe you've grown bitter now. 
Maybe you've grown resentful. You know, maybe you've grown to a place where where you no longer um, pray as deep or as hard or that intimate anymore to him. And so now your prayers are light because you go, he hasn't answered that prayer for me. The big prayer that I wanted, that big prayer that I, that, that I was almost, I mean, passed out. And he didn't answer that for me. And so now, you know, now you're like, well, why should I even pray that deep if he, he's not answering my prayers? Sorry, there's a flyer on here. And so I want you to know that what happens to a lot of us, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be included in this, okay? Ready? Again, here comes the transparency. Get ready, put your seatbelts on. <laughs> you know, Hannah's husband, Elkanah, you know, was very faithful in, in his sacrifices. He was very faithful with, let's call it this, with giving. He was faithful with, I mean, serving. He was faithful with doing all these things that, that we see Christians do, right? Um, and, and at the same time, you know, despite his reverence, listen to this, despite his, his piety, his reverence towards God, you know, he, he was a, on the exterior, he looked very devout, right? He fulfilled his, uh, his sacrifice, you know, everything, everything that, that a Christian, a follower of God, well, you know, had to do, they did. Oh, he did. But yet, in his home life, in his home life, it was far from actually serving God. And so here's what I'm saying. Has your prayer life drawn you away from God to, to a place where you only do things because it's what you think you're supposed to do, but your heart is not in it anymore, and your heart's not in it anymore so much that it, you're so far away from God that when you go home, it's as if you just took off a coat and threw it in your coat rack, right, in the closet, and it's only a coat that you wear. In other words, religion, Christianity is only a coat that you wear when it's convenient, when you're supposed to throw it on because, you know, the weather calls for it uh, because you have to go to church or you have to serve or you have to go do this thing. So you wear the coat. And again, it all stems back to an unanswered prayer an unanswered prayer. That maybe God is, didn't say no, but God is just saying not yet. Because I want you to know that God is more interested in having a relationship with you than you acting like, acting like you have a relationship. In other words, you act and you look from the outside. Others look at you and go, yeah, you know, that, that person's a Christian. But at home, in that quiet place, at home, when it really comes down to it, you know, your prayer life has been so weak, weekend and so distant from actually seeking God, seeking the blesser instead of the blessing that uh, you, I mean, what do we call it? We just, you're spiritually dead. You see, Elkanah had this problem. Elkanah's problem, Elkanah's problem was that was that on the exterior, on the outside, he looked like he was doing the right thing, right? But at home, he was a polygamist. He had two wives. And so he was cheating. Number one, cheating on God. And number two, he was cheating on his wife. He had two wives. And, and you know, I brought this up in the morning. And, you know, a lot of guys, you know, were, are in our morning Bible study and they're like, well, yeah, you know, I mean, I'm cool with that in, in the sense, meaning I'm okay. I'm, I'm not cheating on my wife, right? I, I, I don't have an extramarital relationship. Uh, it's not like I'm seeing somebody else on the side or anything like that. But dare, dare I ask this, maybe it's not a physical being, but it's your job or it's your business that you're cheating with on your wife. 
What is it? Maybe it's a hobby. You know, uh, I don't know what it is. You know what it is. You know, the the mistress becomes whatever takes your time, your talents, and your treasures away from God. And that could be many things. But I want to I want you to ask yourself, what is it that distracts me? And and where do I spend all of my time? Where do I spend my treasures? Where do I spend my thoughts daily on? What is that thing? Because it becomes a mistress. That becomes the second spouse. You know, I challenge, you know, I challenge men all the time and I go, "Are you pursuing your your wife ladies are you pursuing your man now it goes both ways right it's not just the guys so i'm not just putting this pressure on the guys but also ladies you have kids you know have do have they consumed you or have you consumed yourself so much with being the perfect mom on the outside exterior that it takes it drains all your energy all your time um, all your treasures, you know, financially, um, your energy that is so zapped at the end of the night, you know, when your husband, your spouse comes home or guys, vice versa, when you're at your job and your business and you're putting all your effort, all your energy, everything that you've got into your mistress, into that, that thing or those people that that actually sucks energy, everything that, that God has gifted you it sucks it away and that becomes your mistress that becomes your mistress you see okana's second wife penina gave him children while hannah which was the favored wife okay was barren but still elkana made his greater love for hannah all too apparent and so what does that do? It, it's, it's, you know, it goes that old, that old saying, I know Jesus used it as for money, but you can't serve two masters, right? Because you're going to love one and hate the other. And, and so Penina is, you know, jealous, obviously, because when, when she sees Elkanah favoring the other woman, the mistress, right, she grows bitter and resentful and taunts and puts down and makes Hannah feel worse about her situation. And I can't tell you how many times I've met with couples and that, that becomes a situation where, you know, um, whatever is drawing the attention of one spouse away from their spouse at their house, you know, you grow resentful, you grow bitter, you grow angry towards that thing. It could be a hobby. It could be golf. It could be, uh, um, you know, going out with your friends. It could be fishing guys, ladies. It could be, again, you're so consumed with the kids and I get it. You know, you got to take care of the kids, but don't forget about your spouse. Don't forget about your husband. All right. The kids are going to grow up. Uh, and in the name of Jesus, hopefully they move out and it's just you and your spouse, right? For the rest of your lives. I can't tell you how many couples get married and, Within 5, 10, 15, 18 years later, when the kids are grown up and they're adults, mom and dad don't even recognize each other. They don't even know each other, right? They, they thought they knew. They become basically just roommates, right? They become two people that just live in the same house but don't even know each other anymore, right? They, they may be married still, but they're not in love with each other anymore. They're just hanging on till the last kid turns 18 and, and then guess what? It leads to divorce. All right, well, inevitably, when we are cheating on God or when we're cheating on our spouse, that leads to conflict. And so are you currently in conflict with your spouse? Are you in conflict with them? I know a lot of spouses Right, right now are like, man, you know, I'm spending a lot of time at home, I'm working from home. And, you know, that's obviously put a lot of tension, a lot of, uh, you know, couples at home. But it's important to understand that if, if you guys are, are missing each other, that should tell you that, again, that you haven't spent quality time with your spouse, that you've actually spent more time 
at your job or your business or wherever it is, or you put so much more value in that because that is your identity now. That is be that is what makes you feel good. That's what makes you feel important. That's what makes you feel uh, like you're alive. You know, uh, like you're accomplishing something, like you're doing something. And I get all that. We all need, you know, uh, to go to work and and be productive. But if that is your end all, if that is everything that 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 you think about, you're consumed with, uh, you know, that is everything that that all you do is think about, and it's not your spouse and and like when you were pursuing them, man, something's wrong. Something's changed. All right, let's move on. I want you to know this. Here's the point. If you're still with me, hanging on, okay? Let me see some likes. Uh, let me see some hearts if you're with me on Instagram, on, on Facebook. If this is making sense, let me see some hearts and some likes. So let me see. Is this, is the Holy Spirit speaking through me to you? <laughs> All right, beautiful, cool. All right. I want you to notice something. I want you to notice that that Hannah's faith, okay, Hannah's faith changed her before her visible circumstances changed. Okay, Hannah's faith changed changed her before before her visible circumstances changed. And so I, I want you to know that God, God may not change our circumstances. Listen. You're praying, right? And you're asking, but I want you to know that God may not change your circumstances until you allow him, listen to this, until you allow him to change you first. Okay, so as you continue to pray, I want you to understand that if you're looking for your circumstance to change and you're missing it, you're missing that God wants to transform you. God wants to change you first. It may be so that you can be prepared to receive the blessing that God has for you. Don't miss that. Th that process is, is it's may, it may be all up to you. It may be up to you. What's the length of time that it'll take for you to change? As I started this conversation earlier, you know, 30 minutes ago, I was talking to you if you were, if you were on and I said, man, the Holy Spirit has been transforming me and changing me because I want to go deeper. Well, guess what? There's a lot of stuff that that he that he needs to unravel first in me, and it starts with my thoughts and things that I'm hanging on to in my heart. Where God's saying we need to remove those things first to make way, to make way for the new things, for the things that you're asking for, Juan. But I need to remove this stuff first. Yes, I'm listening. I'm hearing your prayers. I'm listening to what you're praying and you're asking me. But you're still holding on to some things from the past. A resentment, anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, right? Idolatry. You're idolizing these things more than what you're asking me for. Maybe you're afraid to release these things because you think that they they are a part of you. But you got to release these things because they are not part of your identity or they shouldn't be. Maybe they were part of your identity of who you used to be, but not anymore. And so when I see Hannah praying and Eli sees her on the floor basically in anguish and and he even confused her being drunk you know what Hannah was doing Hannah was releasing everything right that the taunting the the bitterness the, the the anger that she had towards Penina right of her taunting her all the time and, and shaming her and putting her down maybe people from her neighborhood people from her past you know knowing what what uh, what she's struggling with of not being able to have kids, um, you know, this shame and this guilt that she was carrying. I mean, she released it to the Lord. And on top of that, I'm going to ask you this question. Are you willing, like Hannah did, are you willing to release that blessing that you're waiting for back to God? Right? Because we want to hoard it to ourselves. We we, we, you've been praying for this thing so hard and you want it and you're like, I, I desperately need this. And then God gives it to you. And the tendency for every single one of us is to what? To hang on to that with our dear life because you've been praying for that for so long, especially if, if you haven't had children. And then God, God, you know, you've been praying to God, I want a child, I want a child, I want a child. But the question is, 
is are we willing to do what Hannah did with Samuel? And that is dedicate that blessing back to God and say, listen, God, you're going to give it to me, but I know that, that your plans are greater than my plans. Your plans are better than my plans. Again, your plans, God, are better than my plans. And I just, I just want to hang on to that blessing. But, but God is saying, if you give that back to me, I'll use it. It's, it's your blessing. But through you, I'm going to bring this blessing. And it's going, to, it's going to change the life of so many people. The blessing that I give you, the blessings that you have right now, are not for you to hoard, are not for you to hang on to, for you to cling on to, but for you to 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 uh, manage them, for you to steward them, to use them, to help others see how good God is. Can I see somebody put God is good in the comments? Let me see somebody post God is good. God is good. Okay, let me see that in the comments on Facebook and Instagram. Come on, let me see some, some hearts and likes and, and let me hear y'all say, God is good. Come on, post it on here because he is. He's good all the time. He is good all the time. Again, your visible circumstances may not change until you allow God. Yes, thank you, Susie. You know, until you allow God to change you. God wants to change you from the inside out. See, Hannah's faith, Hannah's faith was rewarded with the conception, right? With the conception and birth of a son, Samuel. And so she kept her vow. She kept her vow and uh, she gave him back, you know, to the Lord for lifelong service, tabernacle service. Yes, God is good all the time. Yes, Vanessa, God is good all the time. Yes, Brittany, God is good all the time. Amen. Okay, and let me end with this. Okay, let me just end with this because I want to keep this as short as I can. But man, I get fired up. I hope you enjoy this. Um, I just, I love the word of God. And I, and here's what I want to end it with. Okay, listen, I want you to know that, that Hannah lived in perpetual verbal abuse. There's this saying there's a saying that says, uh, you know, home is where the heart is. Home is where the heart is. That's a saying, right? And that's true for some cases, but how often isn't it also the source of our deepest hurts? Home is also the source of our deepest hurts. Think about that. Okay. You see, I want you to know that, that there is a God there's a God who knows us personally. There's a God that knows us personally and cares deeply for you, for you, and for me. He cares for us. And he knows us and he knows all of our situations. And, and he has the power to change the both. To change us and to change our situation. And he wants to. You see, I want you to know that, that we need to pour out, we need to pour out our agony. We need to continue to pour out our agonies before the Lord and, and, and also before people, right? And this is why we have community groups. And this is why I want to invite you to plug in to more than just listening to a message here on Facebook Live. I'm grateful that you showed up. But man, coming up in September, I want you to know that we're going to be launching a new community group on Tuesday nights. And on Tuesday nights where we can do life together, it'd be via Zoom. So we'll be able to see each other. I'm not going to be guessing who's on. But, you know, we need to do life together, right? Because I know cliche is to say, you know, that you're here in the church world all the time. We are better together. We are because we support one another. We pray for one another. Uh, we take care of one another. You know, uh, we know each other's needs. And, and when there are needs, you know, you know, we help each other out. And so I want you to know that, that from experience, right, this world is a hurtful place. We all know that. We've all been hurt by others and here's here's the other part we've also hurt other people and um i want you to know that that you need to relinquish you need to relinquish your pain and anxiety and your worries to god if if you want to receive the blessings from the lord right he he wants to take that from you he wants to grab your anxieties your anguish your pain 
And, and, uh, and the way we do this, again, is by seeking God daily. His word says in Matthew 6, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness first and everything else will be added on to you. Listen to that. Everything else will be added on to you. Okay? So I want you to know that, that we, need to, we need to surrender over to God and God will answer your prayers. And the point here is, as I close, and, and I'll, I'll close with prayer, is that God changes us. Sometimes he doesn't change our situations or circumstances. And so look out for that. Because God, God is more interested in having a relationship, authentic relationship with you, than just being a blesser, somebody that just continues to give you, give and give and give and give. And all you do is pursue God because he blesses you. You chasing the blessing, you're chasing the blessing versus chasing the blessor. And that's my hope and prayer for you this evening. I hope that's what you get through the example of Hannah. And even though she was in a very terrible situation to be in, but God did answer ultimately her hope and prayer. And because of that, because Hannah was willing to surrender that blessing back to God, God answered her prayer. Let's pray. God in heaven, thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you of how good you are to us. God, I pray for every single person that's watching on Instagram or on Facebook, you know, that their prayers be answered. But, but Lord, I pray that they don't miss the fact that you want to change them. And that is most of the time the prayer that you answer because you want us to have a closer relationship with you. God, what an example of Hannah. Though she was in anguish and pain and distraught and basically uh, in sh living in shame and, and people pointing and, you know, fingers towards her. God, she stayed focused on you, and she knew, God, she trusted in you and knew that you would answer her prayer. And God, so I pray that every single one of us right now, we come humbly to the cross right now at your feet. You're no longer on that cross, but we come to you at your feet right now, and we surrender to you that thing, whether it's bitterness, whether it's anger, whether it's resentment towards you, because you didn't answer that one specific prayer that we had possibly. Maybe we missed it. And so, God, we ask you to give us the eyes to see the wisdom to discern that you did answer that prayer. Because, God, we are better than we were before today. And we want an authentic relationship with you. And so, God, thank you for those unanswered prayers because you know us well. You know what we'll do with that sometimes. Uh, or you know all the time what we'll do. Maybe we'll do worse with it or we'll hurt ourselves or others. And God, for those not yet answered prayers, may you transform us. Will you change us? We give you our hearts. We give you our lives. We give you everything that, we, that you have given us back to you. It's yours, God. Do your will. May your perfect will be done in our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me see some amens out there. Uh, God bless you guys. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Hey, I want to invite you to come back. Very important before you hop off, I want you to know that this Sunday we'll be talking about worry. Matthew 6, 25 through 34 are the scriptures that we're going to focus on. Uh, Matthew 6 says, do not worry. Jesus says, gives us this command, do not worry. And so we'll be talking about worry and what Jesus says about worry. So I want to invite you to come back to The Well Church. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook Live or on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. You'll see a ton of our, all of our messages there. You can go right now, subscribe. We greatly appreciate it. But we have service at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 8 p.m. for those of you who like to sleep in and you know, do other things. And then you can watch service at night uh, and, and share it. You know, we'd love for you to share these messages. We appreciate you all. God bless you. Again, you know, uh, remember to be like Jesus. Do what Jesus did in order to have the life that he's promised us. That is life to the fullest. And that's in John 10.10. 10. I love you guys. We'll talk to you later. Take care.